Welcome back Weld2 family, boys and girls. Now in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to weld in this convection section simulator. But, guess what? Oh, Riley in the house. All right, Riley, I guess uh, we're gonna be having Riley do this video for us. So you don't wanna miss out. Check out weldlife.com and shop all welding gear showed in this video. Hi, welcome back to another video. Uh, my name is Riley Reed. I'm a welding instructor at Northeast Tech in Pryor, Oklahoma. Today what we're going to be going over is a 4-inch Schedule 40 convection section simulator. Uh, this is something that I did a lot in the field. I was specialized in and I did a lot of. Today what we're going to do is we're going to kind of try to show you how to navigate some of the difficult positions that a convection section can offer you. There's a lot of difficult situations where we can't see. There's a lot of difficult situations where we can't get our hands quite in the right positions. And uh, I'm also gonna give you guys some machine settings and some different techniques to kind of traverse this convection section. So uh, what a lot of people don't under, uh, maybe not understand, or maybe somebody's never seen a convection section before. The easiest way that I can explain to you what a convection section is, it is a, a portion of piping that goes into uh, oil refineries and powerhouses that is used for heat, uh, most typically. Uh, another thing that you might hear these called are a coil. Uh, so if any of you have ever seen a, a radiator on a car, uh, an, an older style car, maybe you've seen uh, little 180 degree uh, bends on the ends of that radiator. This is just basically a giant version of that that's used in the oil and gas industry. First thing is, is I've got a CK9 style, this is actually a Profax torch, but it is a CK9 style torch with a flex head. Very, very important that you have a flex head because there are a lot of different angles that we have to achieve to make this weld. And sometimes we can't quite get in there exactly the way that you would want to, so we need to be able to adjust the angle of the neck of the torch. We also want to use small consumables, so we have uh, the stubby style cup and gas lens and then also when you're getting into tight positions like that you're going to have to have really really short tungsten electrodes uh, because of the stubby style cup and gas lens uh, the tungsten is not going to fit in here unless you cut it down to size uh, the second thing i want to talk about i'm going to be using 332 70s6 this is just regular carbon steel an eighth inch 70S6, uh, 332 for the root and hot pass, and then eighth inch for the fill and cap. I'm on a Miller XMT 350 Fill Pro right now. Uh, I'm gonna be putting my root in at 150 amps. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because of my fit up, and that's the next thing I wanna get to. So my fit up on this four inch Schedule 40 is a feathered edge, so no land. Uh, we've got uh, clean white metal on the inside and out. The face of the bevel is cleaned, and I've got about a 16th inch gap in this thing. Uh, the reason that I do that is when you're in this situation, this simulator right here is basically simulating, uh, maybe we're going in and doing some repair work, like we have to cut a fitting off, or we have to cut a tube out and slide a new tube in, and then perform that weld. Uh, most oftentimes when this is built new, these tubes are gonna be sticking out and you're gonna to have to hang each one of these individual fittings on here at a time, which makes it a little easier to weld on. But this is actually gonna be simulating a repair. So the reason I have that small gap is so that I can put my wire in the bevel and I can feel the root going in. I wanna use that small gap to my advantage because I don't have, I'm not in a situation where I could put a bigger gap in it and back feed the root I can't see over the top of it. I can't get my head in there to see very, very good. Uh, so I need to be able to feel that root going in. The other thing that this brings an advantage to is it makes the weld smaller, okay? So I don't have so much weld material that I have to put in there. It makes the weld a little quicker. All right, so right here, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I get my wire in at the right angle. Uh, that's extremely important in TIG welding, especially when we're doing open root pipe. You have to make sure that the wire is coming in at a good angle. Uh, the way that I do that is by making sure that I bend the wire in a way that it's not going to interfere with any of the tubes that are above or below the weld. So I kind of put a little bit of a curve that matches the outside diameter of the pipe 
So as the wire is going in at that angle and I'm feeling it push down inside of the bevel, uh, that the wire is kind of taking the shape of the outside of the pipe and taking some of the guesswork out of my hands. Um, a lot of this route is what I would call semi-blind. Uh, you're not going to be able to see the puddle fully. Uh, a lot of this is done by feel. Uh, some people that end up having to use mirrors or a pocket hood, maybe you're more comfortable doing that. And you can definitely do that if you wanted to. Uh, I just don't like the, the positions that it puts my body in. So I learned how to do it by feel. And doing it by feel requires a lot of trial and error. So if it's not something that you're comfortable with, then maybe you need to figure out a way to make sure that you can see. And I'm just kind of feeling this thing go down into the bevel. I have my head in a position to where I can see the edge of the weld pool crash up onto the bevel. And then I am feeling the wire fall down into the puddle at a certain rate to where I know it's not going in too fast, but it's not going in. Anymore. So here on the hot pass, we're doing basically the same thing that we did on the route as far as the wire goes and I'm using the same technique that I've always used, which is to feed wire going one way and then clean going the other way. So I'm feeding wire in and then pulling the wire out of the puddle and then cleaning down inside of the bevel, then adding more wire going back the same direction. So uh, I've also switched my setup on my rig. I've gone to a number seven cup instead of a number six. The six is what I use for the root because it's smaller and it fits down in the bevel better. Uh, but once I get out here, uh, kind of outside the, outside the confines of the route and I'm getting into the hot pass, I'm going to uh, bump up that cup size, give myself a little bit more gas coverage uh, since I'm feeding a little bit more wire here. Uh, and then also I'm doing the same thing I was on the route as far as watching the edge of the puddle crash up on the bevel in the same spot and kind of using feel this is still semi-blind where i'm not able to see the entire puddle so uh, you got to make sure that you're familiar with being able to watch the edge of the weld pool crash up onto the bevel and know where your weld is at uh, and then besides that also being able to make sure that you can weld ambidextrously uh, or right-handed and left-handed this makes this weld uh, tenfold easier. If you can't weld left-handed and right-handed, you have raised the level of difficulty on this weld by about 10 times. So right here on the fill, uh, I actually initially started out with eighth inch wire and got a little bit too much fill on my hot pass, so I switched back to a 332. Uh, still running the same amps, 150 amps, 332, 70 S6. Uh, the fill is going to be a lot like the hot pass. Uh, we're just going a little wider and paying attention to the edges of the weld pool crashing up on the edges of the bevel. That's the main thing. Uh, the most important part on the, on the final fill pass before we cap is to make sure that we get all the way over to the far edge. And I would probably say that that's the most difficult part about this is depth perception and being able to see the puddle go over to the other side and know when to stop. I know uh, a lot of younger welders that I've watched that, that have gotten into this, that's their number one problem is they can't, they can't quite see uh, that far edge. So uh, either being able to get your head in a position or just to, the experience of uh, knowing when to stop and then also a lot of that feel comes into play on there. So uh, we're just, we're going around here bending the wire just like we did before. I'm still with that number seven cup and we're just looking to get this thing flush so we're ready to put a cap on it. All right, so right here on the cap, uh, we're at, we backed our amperage down. I went down to 140. The pool seemed a little liquid and the center of the pool was kind of trying to fall back down the bevel. So uh, to get that thing to solidify a little bit better, I went ahead and turned it down to 140. I'm using an eighth inch 70S6 to go ahead and cap this thing tall caps never hurt anybody. When you're welding in difficult positions like this, there's things that are gonna happen. Uh, you're gonna have, you're gonna have mishaps, you're gonna have mistakes, you're a human being. So you, you just have to understand that, that, that mistakes are gonna happen. The reason that we have put a little taller cap on there is when we go to shoot an x-ray on this thing, if there is any small imperfections, low spot shadows that might show up on x-ray film, uh, a taller cap is gonna give you some more thickness there 
and it might kind of help hide some of those things that might have got called out. Once again, watching the edges of the weld pool in relation to the edges of the bevel, I know that I've got this thing pretty flush, so those hard lines have kind of gone away of the, of the crest of the bevel. So uh, all I really have to go off of is the edges of the weld I've left behind before. So you gotta make sure that those are nice and straight so that the cap uh, is, is the same way. So uh, uh, this thing's actually starting to get pretty warm because we've been, we've been pounding it with a lot of heat here. Just make sure that you're, you're watching those edges, bending that wire around, getting your hands in comfortable positions and that makes, it, makes this weld a whole lot easier. All right. There it is guys, uh, that's a 4 inch Schedule 40 on the uh, convection section simulator here. This is an awesome little simulator to, to give you a taste of some of those more difficult welds that you're going to run into in the fields. Once again, I'm Riley Reed, I'm a weld instructor at Northeast Tech in Pryor, Oklahoma. You guys can follow me, or, uh, follow me on Amish Mafia Fabworks on Instagram and on TikTok. Thanks. Thanks.